the very first hand of the session, we're dealt pocket aces in the hijack. I raised a 30. I don't realize that the cutoff is called while I was getting my camera set up. I think everyone is folded, and I almost turn my cards face up as I excitedly say, Literally first hand. Luckily, I quickly realized that the cutoff put chips out there and still has cards, so I try to save it to make it not seem like I was just about to show everyone that we have aces. First hand or getting we might have done a sufficient job. Everyone at the table probably just thinks that I'm a weirdo for being this excited about playing immediately. We're heads up out of position. The flop comes King Jack 3 with two clubs. I keep my streak alive, flopping an overpair or better with aces. I bet 40 for value. We have the ace of clubs, making it a lot less likely that our opponent will be on a flush draw, yet he calls anyway. He probably has one pair or perhaps a straight draw. The turn is the ace of hearts, giving us top set. I actually don't love seeing it because if we were up against a hand like King Queen, the opponent won't feel as comfortable putting in money with second pair and will have picked up a straight draw. We also lost the lead if we're up against Queen 10. We still can't let the opponent see a free card. I bet 60. The cutoff doesn't seem to like my $60 bet. He wants the price to go up and raises to 200. We've got the second nuts and relevant card removal, making it way less probable that we're up against a flush draw or two pair hand. Plus, we didn't get three bet preflop like I imagine we would have by pocket kings and pocket jacks. So the main hand that I put the cutoff on is a straight with queen 10. There's still no chance that I'm folding, but I'm not fist pumping about getting raised here. I play conservatively and call for 140 more. This pot is getting large and the opponent only has 710 left in his stack. The river is the seven of spades. We finished the hand with the second nuts. I check, the cutoff, who's an older gentleman, still likes his hand. He fires for 410. Ordinarily, I jam for the remaining 300 or so that the opponent has behind here. I really don't get the sense that I have the best hand, but I can't ever fold. Yeah, there's not much for you to have other than the nuts here. I call. Yep. Nice hand. This is the first hand for it. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> the cutoff has exactly what I expected. He turned the straight. If I had shown up two minutes later to the table, I'd have 700 more dollars. It's a brutal way to start the session. The very first hand, we get cooler. We get some new chips and pocket threes under the gun about 15 minutes later. It's certainly okay to fold small pocket pairs from early position if you're in a tough game with lots of 3-betting. Most of the time, that won't be the case. I raised a 30. The big blind is my good friend Kevin Colenzo. He's been in several previous vlogs. He calls for 20 more. We're heads up in position. The flop comes 7-4-3 rainbow. We've got bottom set in a situation where we shouldn't be strong very often. The big blind checks. I'm not a big fan of slow playing, particularly when the board is coordinated. I bet 40. The big blind may have a piece. He calls. The turn is the six of spades, putting four to the straight out there. Kevin could easily have a five. He knows it. He knows that I know it. He reps it and leads for 80. Sets haven't been good to us so far. But less than 20 minutes into the session, we lost half our stack by losing to a straight when we had a set earlier, and we may lose to another straight here. Again, we can't fold, especially for the price we're getting, when we should have at least full house outs. We call, then wish very hard for the board to pair. The dealer might be a genie, he puts out another six. We improve to a full house in a spot where it looks like we might just have an overpair to the board. Our good buddy is never gonna suspect we've got a monster. He bets a healthy 240. The issue is that he actually could have a full house himself and every other full house is beating us. He could have comfortably led turn with a higher set or even two pair that is now turned into a better full house knowing that all have very few fives as an early position preflop raiser. I really only have pocket fives sometimes and ace five suited, that's it. If I raise over a fairly large bet, my opponent is too good to call me with a hand even as good as a straight. He didn't win his two World Series of Poker Circuit Rings and 1.5 million in tournament caches by calling a bunch of river raises. Since I don't think that we'll get called by worse, I just flat. Turns out, Kevin isn't my friend at all. He tried to bluff me with ace-queen suited while I was already stuck with a complete lack of respect. He knows the board is theoretically better for his range than it should be for ours. In fact, based on how this hand played, it would seem that our whole cards got somehow switched. I wouldn't expect Kevin to have ace-queen, and he obviously didn't expect me to have threes full. We're already on the comeback trail. It's nice to win this one to alleviate some of my concerns that we're going to get absolutely torched today. Just seven minutes later, we've got queen-jack offsuit in the cutoff. I raised a 30. The small blind is a good European pro that I've battled with before. He just flats. We're heads up in position. The flop comes king-8-4 rainbow. We've got nothing except a backdoor straight draw. Small blind checks. King high flops aren't bad against a small blinds range. I bet 30, hoping the opponent will fold a small pocket pair or an ace high hand. He doesn't. He calls. Okay. 
Perhaps he has a king or another pair or even a set. The turn is the king of diamonds. Now it's much harder for me to pretend that I have a king because there aren't that many left in the deck. The small blind checks. We could be up against trips or another hand that isn't folding. I check back to see a free ripper. The dealer puts out the jack of hearts, catapulting the value of our hand. The small blind checks once more. I highly doubt that he'd check a hand better than ours after we checked back the turn. It's just tough for us to get called by potentially something much worse. We'll have to go with a small sizing. I bet 40 for thin value. The opponent hates that number more than I hated when my middle school basketball coach, who I think might have been homeless, used to make us do suicides at the end of practice. The small blind puts in the check raise to 200. I'm tired of getting check raised in these spots. This is the third time in recent memory that this has happened after I've checked back a turn. The first time the opponent had quad tens, the second time was last vlog, which was a session yesterday for me, and the opponent had the ace high flush when I had trip jacks. I called in both of those instances and was wrong. You'd think I would have learned my lesson by now. Nope. When people take lines and tell stories that don't add up in my head, I can't help myself. I call for 160 more. Obviously, the opponent is no good. He has pocket fives that he turned into a bluff. We pick him off. We show the good European pro that us Americans play with a lot of heart, and we'll call a million river check raises in spots that we probably shouldn't, if it only means that we can win just one of them for a medium-sized pot. That's right. USA! USA! You... Okay, I'm done now. We add on for 500 more, then pick up 6-5 diamonds in the small blind. It's another straddle pot. After it folds to me, I consider raising. Instead, I call for 15 more. The big blind calls. Under the gun raises to 100. He's kind of a nutball. I almost raise anyway. I'm kind of on tilt, and I feel like I'm due. That's a dangerous combination that leads me to calling for 80 more. The big blind folds. We're heads up out of position against a short stack whose pre-flop raise we shouldn't have called. At least the flop comes a 7 4 rainbow. We've got an open-ended straight draw. I check. Under the gun down bets to 80. I'm certainly not folding. I raise to 500 as a semi-bluff. It's almost enough to cover the opponent, but not quite. The dude has been overly aggressive. He's not going to have an ace or better all the time. Even if he does and he calls, we'll still have up to 8 outs. The problem is that our image isn't particularly great. It wasn't that long ago when I got caught bluffing with King 3 suited. The opponent doesn't feel like he needs to have a hand even as good as an ace to get it all in. He jams for 580 total. I call for 80 more and hear something that I don't particularly like hearing. Oh god, how light did this guy call me? This will be another embarrassing one if we lose. The turn is another ace. We're running out of time to make a straight. The river is another four. We completely brick it. Again, we're forced to turn over the loser. Six high. Nice high, nice high. The opponent owns my soul with queen seven suited. He got it in against me with second pair and it was way good. The funny thing is that if his hand was face up, I probably would have done the same thing on the flop. Not only does he read me like a book, but he tells the whole table before the turn came out. He got me good there. I'm forced to go back to the well. I add on for an additional 700. I'm in for 3,400 total. I'm down 1,900 on the day after a disastrous start and several failed bluff attempts. Next, we're dealt ace king offsuit under the gun plus one. I raised it 30. The hijack calls. The small blind is a new player who I don't know anything about. He three bet jams for $780. This is an incredibly bizarre situation. I can't remember the last time that I saw a three bet jam for over 25 times the size of an initial raise at least not at these stack depths. I don't know what he's trying to accomplish. I call, I suppose that I could have folded since I didn't have much invested, but we're not in the folding mood. Maybe I'm just flipping against jacks or something. I really have no idea. If the opponent has aces or kings, he just made the best play that I've ever seen against me because I've fallen right into his trap. The hijack folds. The small blind shows that Christmas has come super early this year as he tables ace-jack offsuit. We show him that we have ace-king, it's possible that this gift that I thought he was giving us might end up being more like a lump of coal. The flop isn't a good one. Jack. There it is. There's no justice today. The flop comes jack 10-8 with two spades. The opponent flops top top. We have the king of spades for the backdoor flush draw, but that's not even live. We're going to need to hit either a king or a queen. The deck finally shows us some mercy. As the queen of clubs comes out on the turn, we've got this all but locked up. It's a pretty good one for me. You got me covered, right? Yeah. Black sir. The opponent is some kind of magical dude like Bagger Vance or something who just shows up for a little while with the perfect instance to help out in a time of need. No one has seen that guy before or since. 15 minutes later, we've got Ace King again. Here we're in the small blind. Under the gun, plus one, raises to 30. 
cutoff heats things up with a 3 bet to 90. She's the female pro who I battled with a few times in the last episode. Our hand is likely best. We don't want to flat and play a big pot multi-way out of position. I put in the cold 4 bet to 350. Under the gun plus 1 folds. I'm glad to see him gone since it's very possible he could have had a strong hand after opening from early position. We're not out of the woods yet as the cutoff calls the 4 bet for 260 more. I put her on pretty much only premium hands. She could even have aces. We're heads up out of position. The flop comes king queen 9 rainbow. Kings and queens could definitely be in her range. Ace king seems like a very likely hand as well. I check for pot control and to get more information from the opponent. She makes a small bet of 250. I wouldn't be surprised to see her do this with something like ace queen suited or pocket jacks. She has to take a stab and gain control of the pot or see how I respond. I call. She could also be doing this with something much stronger so I don't gain too much information here. The turn is the six of diamonds putting two diamonds on the board. I check. I don't really want to face a big bet. Luckily, the opponent checks back. This is a key point in the hand because I now know that we're up against a one pair hand at best. It could be jacks or tens, it could be ace queen or ace king, and there's a tiny chance that it's aces, but she wouldn't allow a free card to come off with a straight set or king queen. The river is the deuce of clubs, it's as blank as it gets. I'm in a unique position. I don't think that a value bet of mine will get called by ace queen, jacks or tens. Of the hands I'm beating, those are by far the most likely ones that will have played the same way up to this point. Since worse hands won't call a bet, and I've already ruled out us being up against a two pair of better hand, I need to determine what we should do against ace king, which is in my mind, the most probable hand that the cutoff has. We need to get her off of a chop. There's almost 1300 in the middle. My opponent has 1200 left in her stack. Let's put her to the ultimate test. We rip it in with top top, hoping for a fold. Even in the off chance that she has aces, she's gonna hate facing this jam. We get over the first hurdle as the opponent doesn't snap call. It seems that we've correctly narrowed down her range to a one pair hand. I'm about as comfortable as I could be because I'm likely either chopping this or I'm stealing it. In other words, I'm pre-rolling a huge bluff attempt. As more time elapses, it's increasingly probable that we're up against exactly ace king. A minute goes by, still the opponent isn't getting much closer to a decision. A full minute and a half after announcing that I'm all in, the cutoff finally folds her hand. She's a cool girl. I let her know what we had and what our intention was with our bet. Just trying to get you off a chop. She doesn't ever tell us what she had. I wouldn't expect her to. It stays silent. There's not much else that she could have had that she'd play the same way and tank fold. With this win, we're within one large pot of being unstuck after battling hard in the trenches. 